is Jamie. I live in Saudi Arabia and I have a makeup collection that just keeps getting larger. Today it didn't. I'm actually doing something quite a bit different than what I usually do today. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm just, I'm kind of doing an unplanned video in the sense that I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just kind of reacting. Like I, I kind of had an idea for this video for a bit now. And then this week, uh, maybe you know, maybe you don't know, I think you probably do know, but this week the beauty community has been popping off in the weirdest way. So let's get into it. I'm gonna get started on my makeup. By the way, I have a cold. I don't feel very good. I'm not going anywhere, so yeah, it's that it's like that today. I've been thinking about this video for a while and I can't really form an idea. Like, which is not good, seeing as I'm gonna like, you know, make a video and post about it. But like, as I mentioned, I'm just sort of mulling and stewing, not stewing, but just, I don't know. I'm curious about how things are gonna go. So does anyone know just what in the hell is going on with makeup in general these days? Or like at all. I don't understand. I don't understand. I guess I understand how we got here, but I'm struggling to really envision what the future is going to look like. So I'll paint you the landscape here. There's kind of two key points that I want to talk about and then I want to just discuss what I think. Not even, I don't even have an idea or a hypothesis of what's going to come next. I'm just kind of gathering what is happening right now and taking a look at it. So anyway, if this is your first time here, hi, this may not be the best video. It's not going to be, I don't know. If this is your first time here, hi, uh, I don't usually do videos like this. I'm normally like trying on makeup and just chilling. So uh, if that interests you, please feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, always feel free to boost engagement, leave me comments, say what you want to say. It's cool, you know? Everything's good. I'm gonna be doing my makeup at the, at the same time because I'm just kind of rambling. I'm gonna be using the Beauty Bay Jade Thorwall palette. I believe this is still available on Beauty Bay. And I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is and I'm gonna try to use this top row here today because I think it's hideous, but it'll work for me for today. So first and foremost, we're painting the landscape here going into like, this is early 2023. I was also taking a break. I was blissfully taking a break, not shooting videos at all. I have been on a scheduled break and it has been really, really good for me. I have a bunch of videos coming. I have everything pre-filmed, set to go. I have ideas for the next couple months even. And then just things are going crazy in internet land. So I am taking a moment to do an unplanned video and let's discuss it. So I'm painting you a picture. What is happening right now is that Morphe has closed all of its US brick and mortar stores. And that to me is huge. That's crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Considering where they were at in 2016. And I'm just kind of, again, I'm just kind of gathering the evidence and sort of putting it down on paper for other people and maybe myself later to comment upon. But yeah, Morphe has closed all US brick and mortar stores and essentially left a bunch of people without a job, which is not cool. That's rude. It's pretty rude. And how did we get here? Morphe, Morphe. How did we get here? So first of all, I want, I want us all to take a look at the beauty influencers that we venerated even just up until a couple of years ago. And let's just kind of tally up and see where they're at now. I should also mention that like, I watch YouTube every single day. 
I watch YouTube every day. I get up in the morning and while I put on my makeup, I look for something for like a good half hour, 20 minutes to watch while I put on my makeup and go about my morning routine. I watch YouTube every single day, every day, you know? So to see like kind of a drop off in those that I used to watch is kind of irritating to me. Like, I still want that. I still want the con, I'm giving the content. I still want it. So let's start with Manny. Manny had a huge following, got canceled, and kind of managed to bring himself back up a little bit. And he's still not amassed the same level of following as he had previously had. But if I, if I could take a stab and a slap in the dark, I would say that he's comfortable here. I would say that he is okay with where he's at in terms of his channel growth. And there's nothing wrong with that at all, by the way. Like, there's nothing wrong with recognizing, like, this is, this is a good place for me. This is where I'm comfortable. But I also sense, like, a shift in his content in general. Like they started, he and Laura Lee started the full coverage podcast, which there's nothing wrong with that. But again, that sort of signifies to me that everything is kind of shifting and taking a new direction. And while we're talking about Laura, um, I never watched Laura and as I've kind of briefly mentioned, not in a bad way, but just like her vibe ain't my vibe. It's not my vibe. I think she has a lot more like lifestyle sort of content and a lot of like Amazon unboxing. You know, I just don't care about that stuff. Like I'm not a homemaker particularly. Like I'm essentially countryless and I have no home. Like, I can't, <laughs> you know, I can't get half the shit on Amazon that you're opening because it doesn't deliver to my country. So, you know, okay. So, She's kind of gone from being a full-time beauty influencer, pushing Morphe codes to just generally more lifestyle. And again, I actually didn't check on her following because I kind of don't care. But yeah, the two of them together are kind of branching into a new direction together into podcast land. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, again, I sort of feel a generalized shift. Oh boy. So if we're talking OGs, OGs, we're talking now about Jacqueline. Boy, oh boy, okay. Jacqueline has somehow managed to be in the news this week, which to be honest, like I've tried to like Jacqueline. Again, it's kind of not my vibe. <laughs> like even original OG Jacqueline Hill content is still not really my vibe. And I don't own anything from Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. Actually, I was gonna use, I didn't even think about this, I was actually gonna use the palette, the Morphe Jaclyn Hill original collaboration palette for this video, but then I forgot. And it's probably okay because I, it's fine. <laughs> and yeah, Jaclyn, you know, really represents that, very, very old school beauty influencer vibe. Like when she first started, she was sitting, you know, like me, she was sitting in her bedroom with bad lighting and a bad camera and just doing her makeup. And I love that. Um, I think that she was extremely relatable and just seemed like a friendly type of person. But then what, she's kind of shifted into is not anything I care about at all. So she still has 5.62 million subscribers and her last video was four weeks ago. And she has kind of a video every four to six weeks. Even if I was to be a fan of hers or maybe I had been influenced by her in the past, then I would still be on YouTube and be really disappointed in that amount of videos that she's producing. Like, I want to see content. And where is it? 
Where did you go? What are you doing? Like, what, what even are you actually doing? Is that bad? What are you doing? You have all this money and all of this stuff and you're not producing content and you're getting, by the way, you're probably still getting tons of PR and these companies are probably just hoping and wishing that you'll sit down and use their products in just an obscure video and even just mention it. The other thing too is that when influencers like that big of an influencer sits down and even mentions a product, they make money from the brand. Like they can charge the brand a certain amount of money to mention products. So what's happening? What's happening? Like recently, Jacqueline has <laughs> gotten in the middle of it with drama channels and um, she's gotten in the middle of it with drama channels and like involved herself in this Michaela scandal that seems to be happening. I don't know if scandal is the right word, don't quote me. But yeah, like she's kind of throwing her weight around in an argument that doesn't necessarily seem to involve her. And I just think it's kind of strange. Like maybe, just maybe, instead of doing this, you could just make content. <laughs> because I don't know. I'm maybe I'm maybe I'm maybe I'm a dinosaur. I could be totally a dinosaur, and you can tell me. It's fine. I am 31 years old, and I am in Saudi Arabia, but. Yeah, like I could be saying things that are completely off base, but that's just my perspective. Like what I'm trying to get at is that a lot of these big influencers that we were so interested in watching, you know, not even three years ago, three, maybe even five, but like, I don't know, hard to say, hard to say. The influencers that we used to look to, they're, they're kind of like faded into obscurity at this point, which then leads me into Jeffree Star. <laughs> so I know Jeffree Star is a pretty blacklisted name on the internet right now. And like, I haven't watched these videos, but I just noticed that on drama channels, he was recently talking about how he escaped the Illuminati. Let's talk about just makeup, like brass tacks. Let's talk about makeup. I don't think that moving to Wyoming was a bad choice by any means. I think that like if he is to be believed as a genuine person who has things happen to him in his life that lead him to make certain decisions, I do believe that living in Wyoming could be one of the better things for someone like that. Like, I'm not saying that uh, by moving to Wyoming that automatically makes you obscure. Uh, it, it's, it's a little interesting, but just in general, lots of people kind of depart from LA when they get tired of the, they get tired of the scene and they go out west, which is where I'm from. Like, I'm, I'm familiar and with that though comes kind of a sense that you've taken your hand off the pulse of what is trending or what is interesting or what people actually want. And I say that because I'm looking at, I'm looking at that latest launch. That latest launch was bad. <laughs> and then the launch before that, the wedding themed one, also bad, not, not good. And you know, success is relative but the hype surrounding that conspiracy palette is probably gonna be, I don't, I wouldn't imagine that you could replicate the hype around that conspiracy palette ever again. Like that was, that was a moment in time, you know? I don't think that they can expect to ever really truly do that again. Yeah, that came at a time to where the internet was blowing up over other things. So for good or for bad, I don't think that's ever gonna happen again. Uh, but that said, conceptually, I think it's a good idea 
that palette. I think that the, the, I think that the art behind it was, like the packaging and the artwork and everything behind that release was really good. But I'm here to tell you, what the hell, what the hell is that color story? Just absolutely what in the whiskers is that color story? I hate it. And even the wedding one before that, gross. No, <laughs> no, 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 thank you. I didn't even check his sub subscribers. I didn't even check his viewership because ultimately like it doesn't really matter, I guess, because I don't know, like he's straight said he's leaving YouTube, like he's leaving it all behind. And again, uh, maybe that's just a ploy for attention. Maybe that's just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But it's, it's, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird how we, it's weird how we got here. How do we get here? How, how did this happen? Then next up, Bailey, Bailey Sarian. Um, I love Bailey Sarian and I, was always really excited to see what she was doing. And the other thing about Bailey Sarian is that before she got so famous for murder mystery makeup, and then subsequently her podcast, Dark History, she was doing tutorials. She was doing product, like some product reviews, some tutorials. And then she came up with a really good idea. And I think it was genius. She kind of pioneered a new thing to do for long form on YouTube. But from what I gather, and again, this is very cursory. I don't know anything. Um, from what I gather, she's had a bad year personally. Like her personal life seems like she's going through it. And I understand it seems like we all go through these times, but then she just dropped off like, Nothing, no videos. She did have a video yesterday, but if I'm gonna be really honest, for me, I don't care about dark history. I hate it. I think it's just a reach. I think it's a reach and a grab for more of that YouTube money. And she is up to like 6.7 million something subscribers. And you know, go, go Bailey, but also, like the heart and the soul of the content is kind of gone. Like she has obviously a team doing her research and then she's so scripted that it's stiff, you know? I don't enjoy watching that. I don't enjoy watching somebody very stiffly discuss murder. I want Bailey, Bailey to discuss murder. And then I want to see her do her makeup. like. I want to know. I want to understand how other people do their makeup. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> maybe maybe I'm the odd one out, but I I wouldn't even call it like tutorial content, but just like I miss the days of like, hey, I'm going to do this look. Follow me. And that's often what I like to see. I like that. I like that style of of whatever. This is weird. I don't know about, I don't know about this. I don't know, I don't know. James Charles. Let's talk about James Charles. I never liked James Charles. <laughs> and uh, that's fine, you know. I think I subscribed to him momentarily, kind of when I thought that he was maybe in the clear of having done some things that he's been accused of and also found to be doing. <clears throat> but I still couldn't get into his content whatsoever. I just did not find it interesting and I didn't find it, yeah, I just didn't find it interesting. I don't think I'm the target, I'm not the target audience for that, which is fine. But then it seems like now his channel is fairly dedicated to like challenges and stuff, which gross. No, and again, what I'm leaning towards is that it's getting away from the makeup. It's leaning away from the beauty space. 
And that's not why people get into the beauty space. They get into the beauty space to watch about beauty. What is that episode of RuPaul where it's like, where are the jokes? It's like that. Where is the beauty? Give it, give that to me because that's kind of what we all signed up for. We did not sign up for drama and your bullshit. We signed up for beauty, which kind of leads me into another painful, <laughs> painful area of discussion. And I don't like feeling this way, I guess. I don't, I don't like feeling this way, but I watched a, I watched a drama channel recently kind of discuss this and I sort of feel the same way. Raw Beauty Christie. Stop. <laughs> Stop it. Raw Beauty Christie represents a lot to normal people like me. I'm normal. I started watching Raw Beauty Christie during the pandemic, to be honest. And I really liked her kind of familiar vibe. She's from Seattle or the Seattle area which is kind of where I am from more or less. And that felt really familiar and homey to me. And when I do makeup and when I like have a beauty influencer on while I do my makeup, it's like I'm trying to emulate like the experience of getting ready with my sisters, you know? Like my sisters and I have somewhere to go and we're gonna do our makeup and talk about things, you know? And that's what I really liked about her. That's what really resonated to me about her is that I felt that I was, I felt that I was with someone normal, that I was with somebody that looked, you know, looks normal, is normal, has a normal personality, doesn't have like a crazy ego or anything. No one on the internet, no one on the internet would blame you for having kind of an identity crisis surrounding motherhood. I venture to say that that's something that a lot of women go through. And while I do think that she has made like a lot of space on the internet to discuss it, I am tired of hearing about it. I am not that much younger than she is. I do not have kids. And right at the moment, I do not plan on having kids. Like, it's not in my immediate, like, plan at all. I, I want makeup. <laughs> I think you should talk about kind of where your identity is at with, a with being a mother. But I think it may be also equally powerful to demonstrate that you don't have to lose your entire identity when you become a mother. That's, that's more appealing content to me. <laughs> Her kid is really, really young and it takes a long time to kind of get yourself back after having a kid, but that's what I wanna see. I wanna see her strive to regain her sense of identity in and of herself, not just being a mother. That's what I want to see. I have a sister with a kid. I don't need another sister with a kid. That's really insensitive of a remark, but I think it would, like to me, it would be just as powerful to show your audience that, not that you can do it all and that you can have it all, but that you don't just disappear as a person because you become a mother. Or I dislike seeing someone kind of falling into the trope of, well, now I'm now I'm a mom and now all I think about is what my kid is doing. I don't think about putting on makeup because I have so many other more important things to think about. Makeup is what got you all of your wealth. Makeup. And the people that wanted to see you do makeup. Like makeup makeup got you to where you are. Makeup paved your way to success. And then I understand you don't want to feel disingenuous or whatever, but also like kind of recognize that what you had was powerful. What you had was powerful and declining and 
sort of letting motherhood dominate you in a way, oh man, that sounds so bad. Like letting motherhood totally swallow your identity and leave nothing of you left. Uh -uh, I don't want to see that. I don't. I want to see a woman that is a mother and kind of challenges the idea that we have to give everything up because we become mothers. I want to see somebody challenge and rise to the occasion that just because I had a child doesn't mean I totally lose all of my identity and all of my interests. That's the kind of thing I want to see. I understand that you've gone through something really huge and that you will never be the same again, but I think it would be much more impactful. Ooh. I think it'd be much more impactful and much more powerful for you to sit back and understand that you don't disappear because you are a mother. Like, bad example, but my sister had a kid and my sister has one child. And my sister is in her, I don't know, mid, uh, late thirties. And my sister recognized that she was kind of falling into maybe a bit, I, and I, you know, maybe I, Maybe I am paraphrasing a bit and I am taking words from her mouth, but my sister seemed to realize from an outside perspective, she seemed to realize that she was kind of losing herself in being a mom and she had a really difficult, really fussy baby. My sister seemed to recognize that she was sort of losing her identity and she took up cycling. She got super passionate about cycling and she carved out time in a day to cycle and she got a bike and she got expensive bikes and she, that's what she tends to spend her money on. She got a bike tattoo. She goes on a bunch of rides and you know, maybe this isn't her, I don't know, maybe this isn't her interest forever, but still when she felt that she was getting swallowed up by motherhood, she pushed back. That's what I want to see from you. Raw beauty, Christy. That's what I want to see. I want to see you push back. I want to see you do the things that you set out to do and also be a kick-ass mom. That's what I want to see. Last influencer that I'm going to talk about, Michaela. People watched her content because she was relatable. She has a fun accent. She's kind of brassy and the way she talks is fun and she sort of doesn't mince words and people respond really well to that. Um, and lately she's been exhibiting some problematic behavior and she's kind of the her her crown is a bit tarnished at this point we kind of put our last like it seems like people put our last bit of hope in the beauty influencer in Michaela and she's beginning kind of a bit of a decline um there was that video about like try being an influencer try like okay <laughs> that's the thing a lot of people would say like okay let me add it. Let me do it. Michaela is a bit different because she is not a YouTube influencer, but at this point she is kind of going, going down the same road as our sort of classic, you know, venerated beauty influencers from YouTube in the sense that we have put a lot of trust and a lot of faith and a lot of hope with her. And then we're coming to find that it turns out she's a person. <laughs> Uh, people are not perfect and people don't react perfectly in all situations all the time. The, a lot of the ways that she responds and the things that she says in response to criticism just to me seems that like she's 24. <laughs> she's being 24. Y'all, she's a 24 year old person. Like these things happen. And I don't know. I don't personally watch a lot of her content. It's not really, again, it's not really my thing. And maybe that brings up a point, maybe that brings up a point for myself. Like maybe I don't know what I want. <laughs> what do I want out of a beauty influencer? I do kind of want the storytelling element like Bailey Sarian. I do kind of want the tutorial element and I do kind of want the product reviews. 
I don't want someone to try to sell me things. I don't like it personally when someone becomes unrelatable, which is to say like, yeah, I don't care about you shopping for an expensive bag. I just don't. Because me, I'm never gonna go shop for an expensive bag. That's just not the thing I'm gonna do. I don't wanna see a tour of your $5 million house because I'm never gonna have a $5 million house. And I'm glad you have that. I'm glad you're doing that well. Cool, but that is not content that I am going to consume. And if I see too much of that content, I'm gonna unsubscribe. <laughs> and like, also, if you are pushing content that has nothing to do with makeup, for me, I'm gonna unsubscribe. Because I want makeup content. Revolutionary, I know. That brings me to where we're at now in the discussion. That is Morphe closing. I mean, could we have even predicted that? <laughs> Just even two years ago. I don't think we could have ever predicted that. And I think that Morphe has suffered kind of a lapse in judgment in that they've hitched their, they've hitched their wagons to very problematic influencers and been kind of shady all along. And here we are. And to me, their makeup is not that interesting. I'm sure a lot of people would agree with me in saying that like, I like forget, forget all of the beauty influencers, forget all of the scandals, all of the, all of the things, all of the things that have gone down, especially with like James Charles and Jeffree Star, that had to have been huge. Like, and also what a stupid decision to discontinue their relationship with Jeffree Star, to be honest, like that was a bad call. <laughs> um, I think the, the pure hype of Jeffree Star brought in so many people to the Morphe stores. And also the decision to make Morphe a brick and mortar store. I don't really understand where your head was at with that. Um, they have closed all of their locations in the US and they are now focusing purely on e-commerce but you know, for how long? They're gonna have to push some revolutionary products in order for anyone to even notice that they're still there. That's my guess. I don't know what they're gonna have, I don't know what they're gonna have to come up with in order for them to get any new buyers of Morphe, especially after this latest stunt, because people are mad, you know, especially after seeing that TikTok from one of the store managers saying like, yeah, I came to my store today and it's closed and no one knows anything. Like, I don't think, I don't think public perception is gonna really support you after that. <laughs> I don't, I don't think the public is gonna be that interested in supporting you as a brand if you choose to do things like that. And um, they had to have taken a hit when James Charles was accused and then later found to be guilty of, I mean, not legally guilty, but like had admitted to lots of instances of misconduct. I'm not gonna get into it, but yeah, your brand had to have taken a hit. And I've also, like the other thing too, is that like in general, hitching your wagon to these big influencers has really been the downfall of you in the sense that like, you have a collaboration with Nikita Dragon. Oh boy. Like, does anyone remember what Nikita Dragon was in the news for recently? Wasn't walking children in nature. I guess that is all to say, like, I'm really rambling too. This is gonna be a crazy ass video. It's not just Morphe either. I mean, like, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw other brands closing as well. I mean, I don't think this is unique specifically to Morphe. I think we're gonna see other brands closing and we've seen it with BH, we've seen it with Makeup Revolution and 
I think that it's just gonna continue. But what I want to know, what I wouldn't, what I'm curious to know, and what I am gonna be kind of like sitting back and waiting for is to see what replaces it. And I think that maybe in the United States, like, and this kind of leads leads me into another video I'd want to wait, want to make, is that. People in the United States have no clue <laughs> what is going on in other countries. And the thing is, is that like, for instance, Saudi Arabia is one of the number one consumers of cosmetics in the world. And then India is like a huge consumer of cosmetics. And have you seen the population of India? Like. I, I would dare say that um, any American influencer, like, while respected overseas, is very quickly going to become um, irrelevant. Like, very quickly, I would imagine. I'm not sure, but I would imagine. The United States is not the only place that consumes makeup. And the other thing, too, is, like, the UK. UK brands are killing it. Also, like, Beauty Bay is a distributor based in the UK. Be perfect. Great products. UK. Northern Ireland, I think. And have you seen what these girls are wearing? They wear tons of makeup. I don't think that it is unanimous that we're all, you know, giving up our full coverage foundation and only subscribing to like these very like minimalist influencer type of looks. No ma'am. No, 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 no. Have you seen these girls? They put on makeup. They put on crap tons of makeup. And I'm here for it. I want to see what they're what they're going to do. <laughs> I wish that my favorite influencers were still making content. I really do. I dislike the that I dislike that their posting is so infrequent. I dislike the content that they're posting and I don't think that anybody is going to have like those big amounts of followings ever again. I just don't. But what I'm interested in is what's going to come after because makeup is not going away. Interest in makeup is not going away. If anything, with the reach of TikTok, it's going to grow. So. I am interested to see what these influencers either adapt into, which, again, I'm not altogether here for. I kind of don't appreciate that influencers lately have been saying that the beauty space is dead. It's not. <laughs> um, I think that there is still a ton of interest. And like I said, maybe you're speaking about yourself. Oops. Well, that's rude. But, like, maybe you're speaking about specifically like American, American beauty markets, American situations. Like, did it ever occur to you to like look outside of the US and see what's going on? So it's crazy to me the, the United States kind of holds the key to the beauty market and they're kind of pushing one narrative when the rest of the world isn't really like that. The other thing, like the other thing too, is that when American beauty influencers either react to or kind of push trends, in a certain direction, it is not really what the rest of the world is interested in. Like I, like I mentioned, in the UK, they are not they are not doing like that minimalist Korean beauty sort of thing. They are putting foundation on. They're putting a matte beat on, ladies. It's not uh uh. It's not the same. And they wear their makeup. A lot. They wear false eyelashes. A lot of people wear false eyelashes every single day. I don't know a single person in the U.S. that wears false eyelashes every single day. I don't know that person. It, it, it's me. That's it. <laughs> the Middle East. Hello? Hello? I feel like it's just like... It's just an untapped market waiting for someone to lead. And... The Middle East is a huge consumer of cosmetics and to say that the beauty market is dead 
is false. Like, have you ever thought about the amount of makeup that people put on for a wedding in Pakistan? Shocking. It's shocking, okay? <laughs> All of these communities are operating under your radar and you don't even know and you're pushing this narrative that the beauty community is dead. It ain't. It's not. So that's the other thing is that like, just because it's not, just because it's not what it was when you were relevant doesn't mean that it's dead. That's so bitchy. <laughs> just calling people irrelevant when I have no relevance. Is that nice? I have chipped, look at this. I've dropped this so many times it's chipped now. All right, this was a weird ranty video. I don't even know that I'll post it, we'll see. I'm just, I'm curious, I'm curious what's gonna happen. I'm curious what it's gonna look like in the future. And to be honest, I'm tired of how it looks now. I want more beauty content. I want more beauty content, but I want more looks, but not tutorials. I don't know how to describe it. Like. I want more conceptual videos. I want more like heavier concept. I want discussions. I want us to talk about makeup. I don't want to talk about who said what and she said this and blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I want makeup content. Okay, that's enough for me. Thanks, have a good day.